Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to another Darkfall video. Today we're going to be using Blender 3.0 to create a VFX shot, as you can see in the example here. The first thing we can do is go ahead and click the VFX template. Now we can go ahead and arrange the layout, get rid of these windows, we don't need them. Now go ahead and load up your movie clip. And if you want to use this movie clip as well, there will be a link in the description. Go ahead and check that out. Next thing we can do is set scene frames. This will set the timeline to be the length of our movie clip. So for this example, that's going to be far too much. So I'm just going to undo that. And the next thing we need to do is prefetch this clip. And now this is filled up all the way. We can play through this and see what we're working with. By the way, if this doesn't fill up all the way, you will need to go to edit preferences and just increase the memory cache limit. Just increase this and you should be good to go. So the idea is we're going to use this area and sort of clone it over here using the VFX nodes add-on, which we'll take a look at in a second. First thing we need to do is create a mask and we want that mask to be moving. So we could create a tracking marker to help us with that task. So make sure we're on the first frame and let's go to the tracking settings. But I'm going to change this to previous frame. Let's also enable normalize. Then the next thing I want to do is go over here to track, just so I can see the area that I'm going to be tracking. So to add a tracking marker, we could use this button here, or we could press control and just click. So now I'm going to press S and scale this up. I also like to see the search area, so I'm going to press Alt S, and that's far too big, so I'm going to scale this down a little bit. Now we need to find an area on this bike that doesn't move around too much. I can't track this light here because it jumps up and down with the movement of the road. I kind of want to match the movement of this bike because it moves around far less. So I'm going to kind of track this area here. Now we've got that, I'm going to track this forward. Now if we play through this, we can see the tracking marker does move around a little bit, which is okay because when we create a mask, we're going to be using automatic keyframes and we're going to be sort of refining that position. So we don't need to worry about that. <laughs> Jump back to the first frame and now we can create the mask. So to do that, we need to change this from tracking to masking. You could also press the tab key just to change between the two. Now we're in the masking mode. I'm going to go ahead and create a new mask and let's call this clone. So to create a mask, all we need to do is hold control and click. We can then add these mask points. I'm going to kind of mask around this wheel here. Then if we hit Alt C, we can close the mask. Now we want to parent this mask to the tracking marker, which is simple. We just need to make sure this tracking marker is selected. We know it's selected because it's still white, which is good. Now we need to select this mask. To do that, we can press A. So now we have all these points selected. Press Control P. Now this mask should follow the tracking marker, which it does. We do have a problem though. We can see that the, the wheel goes almost at what it does. It goes outside of the mask area here. So what we need to do is jump back to the first frame and now we can animate the mask. To do that, we're gonna enable this automatic keyframes here. And now anytime we move this, it will add a keyframe. So now real quick, I'm gonna press G and then hit enter, just so it adds a keyframe for all these points. Then I'm going to jump a few frames forward, and I just want to make sure that the wheel stays inside this masking area. If it starts to go outside the area, like let's see here, we just need to make sure that it stays within the area. So I'm just going to do that real quick, and I will be back in a second. So now the clone mask is done, let's move over to the compositing tab. As always, let's use nodes, and we can get rid of this render layer here, we don't need it. What we do need is a movie clip, so Shift A, input movie clip. And we've already loaded in the movie clip, so let's click this icon here. And there we go. Now let's plug this into the composite node and let's go ahead and add a viewer node. To add a viewer node, we just need to hold Control Shift and then click on this movie clip node. Also get rid of this here. Uh, yeah, so now we have the viewer node. It's a little bit too big in the background. So I'm going to go to view and click fit. This will just fit this in the view. And there we go. So now we're ready to create the effect. Uh, we are, as I mentioned, we're going to be using the VFX nodes add-on. The VFX nodes is a free blender add-on that I've been working on. If you want to download it, there will be a link in the description. All you need to do is click here and it will take you to a page where you can download the script. If you want to know how to install the add-on, there will be a video up here as well. So go ahead and check that out. So we're going to be using this add-on just to take out most of the work of the uh, compositing. It will just add a singular node, which we can use. 
Uh, for example, we're going to be using the clone node, which is this one here. And you can see from the previous example, uh, we had this guy in the shot and we got rid of him. In this example, we're going to turn this into a hover bike. So it should be pretty simple. Um, we could go down here and select the tools or you could use the shortcut. It's entirely up to you, which you do. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of different effects and tools that you might find helpful. And if you don't want to use this add-on, that's totally fine. I will show you inside the node so you can recreate it if you want. But yeah, we're going to be using the clone node. Go ahead and add this in. Now we have this connected up, uh, nothing's changed, which is a good sign. We first need to add the mask. So let's go ahead and shift A, input mask. Go ahead and select your mask. And then we can plug this mask into the clone mask. Pretty simple. So now we have this again, nothing's changed until we actually start playing around with these values. So what I want to do is move this wheel over to the left. And as we start to do this, hopefully it starts to disappear. <laughs> yeah, we can see the wheel sort of goes away. Now there's a couple of things. Uh, it looks like we have an extra exhaust on the bike. If you wanted to get rid of that, that's fine. We can always use the garbage mask or use another clone node. Uh, another thing is the sharp line that we have here. And the third thing would be the color. It's not as dark as it should be. So we're gonna fix all that with this node. Now we need to change the clone feather. So this is the sharp line here. We're gonna start to increase this. Now we can see that it blurs that sharp line, which is good. But what it also does is it makes this area blurry as well, which I don't want. I want to make sure this is nice and crisp. So to do that, I'm going to create a, a second mask, which is going to be just this area here. And before I do that, let's also change the color of this shadow by using this new option, by the way, the clone color value. <laughs> it's nothing special or fancy, but it just changes the color of this here. So I'm going to make this a little bit darker. So something like this, it blends it in a little bit better. And again, this is a new option. So if you've not downloaded the latest VFX nodes add-on 1.8, go ahead and do that. There's a link in the description. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to create one more mask. Let's go back to the motion tracking tab, create a new mask here. Let's call this clone two. Then I'm going to zoom in, control click, create this box mask here and press alt C. And by the way, you could just shift a and add a square <laughs> mask if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. But yeah, that should be fine. We also need to parent this to the tracking marker like we did with the other mask. So I'm going to press A, select all of this. Then I'm going to press Control P. So now this should follow along. Again, we might need to play around with the automatic keyframes. Again, go through this clip and uh, make sure it stays in the position. Like for example, here, it's definitely not in position. <laughs> play through this and make sure it looks good. Then go back to the compositor and then let's just make a bit of space. Now we could add another clone node. If you want, you could duplicate this one, but it has all the values changed. So I'm going to press control A tools clone node. And yeah, it's added down here. <laughs> Connect this up. And of course we need another mask. So I'm going to select this mask and shift D. Then we need to change this mask to clone two. Plug this into the clone mask. Again, just play around with the position. So we have something like this, where there's a clear separation between the bike and the ground. So now we have that, it sort of looks more like a hover bike. Um, yeah, go ahead and add some color grading and all the other little extra things that you think looks good. When you're happy with it and you wanna render this out, if you have the VFX nodes add-on, all you need to do is go to render settings, change all these settings, and then go ahead and hit render video. If you don't have the VFX nodes add-on, again, that's fine. We can go ahead and do that the old way. <laughs> go through these options, uh, resolution, frame rate, uh, the output, that's important, and also the file format. If you wanna render this as an image sequence, go ahead and do that. But I'm gonna render this as a movie clip, so I'm gonna choose FFmpeg video. Then for the encoding, let's choose this preset icon here. And I'm gonna choose H.264 in MP4 format. Then render, uh, render animation or control F12. <laughs> well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. So yeah, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.